Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. This bulletin is coming to you live from our studios here at Kokumlimle in Accra on digital address GA0993341 on Joy 99.7 FM. It's also live on Love 99.5 FM in Kumase, affiliates across the country on ABN Radio in London and around the world at myjoyonline.com. The news is brought to you by Telesol 4G. Just a touch. It's been 197 days since the first girl went missing in Takrade. Two others have been gone for 87 and 70 days together with our families uh, with their families as well and join news we demand swift action from state security agencies is hashtag bring back our tardy girls coming up in this edition national peace council welcomes opposition ndc's proposal to mediate talks to disband party militias after committing to meet with the npp this is a crucial proposal, especially considering the content of the leaked recording in which a voice alleged to be that of the NDC chairman is heard endorsing verbal attacks at the chairman of the Peace Council. We'll speak live with the chairman of the council as well as the communications director at the presidency. Justice Short Commission visits scene of a Yawasu West war going by election violence as 19 bullet marks are identified with the assistance of ballistic experts. For one issue, I think mostly it should be up. So once it's targeted at an object below the height of maybe a normal human being, then I don't see it as a one issue. Also in this package, 18-year-old female recipient of 2018 President's Independence Day Awards yet to receive a prize a year on. I will not hesitate with my organization to take this matter back to human rights court and... We'll hear from her guardian as the president prepares to hand out the 2019 awards later today in sports. Kumasi Asantikotoko's coach says that there will be no room for mistakes in the must-win cup Confederation Cup Group C match against Zambian side in Kana FC on Sunday in Kumasi. And as she exits the tourism sector, which she supervised over the last two years, we'll look back at the tenure of one of the ministers who has been loved and disliked in equal measure. Uh, what we have done in the short 24 months is bearing fruit. You saw the influx of the nature of what we are aggressively doing, promoting Ghana, getting to the global. It, it tells you that something is going well. We have all that and more here on the Midday News with me, MFA Apau. Details shortly. And the National Democratic Congress has proposed the appointment of the National Peace Council as mediator in talks to disband party militias. President Okofado last week asked the NPP to write to the NDC for a meeting to discuss how to end the threat of party militias in the country. In the letter to the president, the NDC commits to honor the invitation. Here's a news desk report. The NDC's letter to President Ekofado was a major pleasant surprise coming at a time when the NDC leaked audio threatened to further divide the two main political parties. In the letter, signed by National Chairman Samuel Ufusuampofo and directly addressed to the President, the NDC says, quote, We will avail ourselves of the opportunity whenever at the pleasure of Your Excellency and at a venue convenient for the purpose, unquote. The President had requested a meeting only between the two main parties, but the NDC is proposing an expansion. They want the discussions to include all political parties, civil society organizations, representatives of the media, the military, police and other security agencies, as well as any other relevant stakeholders. They suggest the National Peace Council be appointed as a mediator for such a meeting. This is a crucial proposal, especially considering the content of the leaked recording in which a voice alleged to be that of the NDC chairman is heard endorsing verbal attacks at the chairman of the Peace Council. The NDC further proposes the inclusion of bodies like the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, to assist the Peace Council. They, however, ask the government to take immediate steps to disband and disarm the illegal armed force being maintained by the National Security Council. They also want the government to abandon its plans and rather instruct its agents in the regions to stop the state-sanctioned recruitment of political party tax for the purpose of the 2020 general elections. The ball is now firmly in the court of the president and his party, the NPP. The president and the NPP's next move will be closely watched, especially by us here at Joy News, as part of our campaign to disband party militias now. We have been joined on the phone by the Communications Director of the Presidency. Also, we are privileged to be joined on the phone by the Chairman of the National Peace Council, Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante. Thank you very much for your time, gentlemen, here on the Midday News. I'll start with you, Mr. Eugene Ahin. Safe to assume the President has received the NDC's letter? Um, I'm a, um, good afternoon and good afternoon to your listeners. Um, um, the Presidency last night 
um, took delivery of the letter from the NDC national chairman, Mr. Samuel Fusuan Pofu. Um, the letter hasn't yet been reviewed by the president uh, because um, after the time it was delivered last night, there was an ongoing cabinet meeting which ran very late into the night. Um, currently, the president is at the Accra International Conference Center as part of the President's Independence Day Awards, presenting um, awards to students who emerged as world best in the 2018 BC um, examination. Um, he returns to the office shortly, and once he does that, um, he will review the letter and definitely will give an appropriate response to um, the NDC national chairman. But one thing we can assure the Ghanaian people is that um, just as um, the NDC chairman made his, the contents of his letter um, public, we would likewise also publicize our response to him. At least the Ghanaian people will know what um, the president's sentiments are with respect to the letter he sent to him last night. Well, it may have not been reviewed in detail just yet, but uh, I'm sure he's had a cursory briefing of what the contents of this letter was. What was his immediate reaction? Oh, um, I mean, he, he, he welcomed the fact that uh, at least the chairman of the NDC had responded to and the call he made um, on, um, on the 21st of February when he delivered the message on the state of the nation um, um, to, to, to Parliament. Um, what might be the case, as I said, um, his contents, well, whatever comments he has with respect to the letter um, sent by Mr. Fosompofo would be publicized. That's, we can assure you. But is the president concerned that he gave a directive to his party, the NPP, uh, to write to the NDC to meet preferably uh, this week, and that did not happen? Is he happy about that? Um, well, the, 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 the week has not ended. I think we still have today, we still have tomorrow, so you never know what would happen. But as of now, I mean, the NDC chairman has expressed some concerns in the letter. Those concerns, definitely the president will respond to those concerns. And if, 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 if the meeting is unable to, to take place in the course of this week, I'm sure probably the um, president would, would, would make his sentiments known in the letter he will send to the NDC chairman. We await that letter, but do we know how soon that will be once he, he gets back to the office? I, I, I didn't get that I'm asking if we know how soon that will be, that response. Do we know how soon oh, that will the, be? Uh, well, the president is expected to be back in the next 30 minutes. So hopefully in the course of the day, hopefully um, in the course of the day, um, he should, he, we, we, should, we should respond to the NDC chairman. But whatever be the case, even if he's unable to do that today, whatever be the case, when that response is made to Mr. Samuel, for, for example, definitely Jeffrey, you get a copy of it, the, the entire Ghanaian population get to know what it is the president has said to himself. Well, we're grateful. And that's the Director of Communications at the end, um, the presidency, I beg your pardon. And like I said, we've been joined also on the phone by the Chairman of the National Peace Council, Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante. It's interesting because the, the NDC made calls that the National Peace Council be made mediators in this meeting, apart from expanding the scope also of the political parties that will be attending this meeting. And we know uh, that there was a leaked tape that alleged, um, Mr. Ofuswampo, who alleged to have made some comments that uh, the, he endorses insults to be reigned on the National Peace Council Chair, Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante. We are grateful for your time here on the Midday News, Reverend. And you, you must have had contents of that leak tape that concerns you as Chairman of the Peace Council. How then you reconcile what you heard in that leak tape on one hand and the NDC's request for the same council that you chair to mediate this important meeting? Well, I, I think um, I, I'm not a, going to comment on the content of that whatever was said on the tape, but I, I will speak as the chairman of the National Peace Council, a national institution that, is, that has been instituted to foster dialogue in view of peace. I think the present call is the right call that, you know, it, the time has come for political parties to sit, especially the major two political parties, to sit and find... Um, amicable solution to this problem of um, political tagging in the country. And the NDC has written this letter. Mm -hmm. I haven't received my copy yet, but I, a copy that is sent to me shows that it's been copied to me, the chairman of the National Peace Council. Mm -hmm. I must tell you that um, just about two, three days ago, the, um, the National Peace Council board met and one of the concerns we expressed was that we will be happy to facilitate that dialogue on the vigilantism because we had earlier on, just even before the incident that has sparked off too much of concern for this, we've been speaking about the whole thing. And so the, 
National Peace Council will be very much happy to um, participate mm. in the in the discussion by facilitating if it is acceptable to the parties concerned. Um, we see it as our duty. We see it as our responsibility, and we will welcome the invitation to facilitate. But considering what might have been said in that leak tape, and you going to be the official mediator in this whole talk, it will not affect work in any way? I don't think so. I think it is an institution, the National Peace Council, and mm. let's, let's look at it that way. Um, whatever was said in the tape is not going to dissuade the National Peace Council from, from doing what it is expected to do by the laws of the land. And I, I'm very sure that we are not going to be um, sidetracked on, on, on our, our responsibility and, and not do what is expected of us. So we welcome it. And we believe that once we, the parties agree to that and it's, it's well for them, we will be willing to offer our services. Now, now, briefly, just before I let you off, as Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante, uh, safe to say, are you forgiving the NDC or its chairman? <laughs> Reverend Professor Asante has nothing against the NDC, and the Re- Reverend Professor Asante will be focused on the work that has been entrusted into his hands till he finishes his term. Well, we'll leave it here. We're grateful for your time. That's Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante, uh, the chairman of the National Peace Council. Remember the hashtag disband party militias now. That's our campaign against political violence. Join our campaign on air and online to put pressure on the political leaders to do what the citizens demand. It's hashtag disband party militias. Now, you're still listening to the Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM. And as many as 19 bullet marks have been identified by the Justice Short Commission within the Ayawaso West Wogan constituency as evidence of the violence that marred the by-election. Experts say they were fired from high-velocity weapons and appeared to have been aimed rather than random gunshots. The number of gunshots exchanged during the election has been a subject of dispute as the National Security SWAT team has insisted that only six gunshots could be attributed to them, but other witnesses have accused the team of firing more than 20 gunshots. This comes as a commission probing the violence today visited the scene to get a first-hand understanding of what actually transpired. Listen to excerpts of the commission's visit. I, I feel highly honored for the whole commission to move here to uh, have a first-hand uh, information themselves. So I am at uh, their service. Whatever they want to see will show. But basically this is the house. Um, on the right here, the, the two down uh, rooms are offices. The top here is my wife's church, the word above ministry. This is the main house. Uh, probably it would be important for the commissioner to actually enter the house and see a few things. Uh, the long room here is my private office with the brown curtains. This is a garage. Uh, I think we'll get nearer it. The only place where they sometimes put uh, some chemicals like caustic soda and so on. Did the police ask you to identify anything within your house? They didn't. They didn't? They didn't. Yeah. What about this allegation about a container <laughs> with weapons? <laughs> Did they ask you about that? No, please. They didn't? No, please. And you don't have any container within the house? No, please. Okay. No container at all. Yeah. They didn't come inside. Uh, the, uh, the police. The evidence uh, that they didn't. The people didn't come in. No, 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 no. No, I'm talking about the police. No, no, no the police did come in. The, the police came in. Yes, the police came in. I'm talking about the police. Oh, okay. the police no. asked him. Yeah. My colleague Joseph Akable was with the team that went to the Ayawasu West Wogon uh, area to ascertain for themselves what actually happened on that day. Uh, Joseph joins me in the studio. Joseph, explain to us what we're hearing in that sound. Uh, so that is interaction between uh, Justice Short, the chairman of the commission, and Adela Likwesi Brempon. He was the NDC's parliamentary candidate in that particular by-election mm. that turned uh, violent. Uh, in that interaction, you heard him. Uh, they were asking questions of him in terms of to take them around his house. Uh, his house is some few meters away from uh, the Presby School where the voting was taking place. Now, when they got to the residence opposite his house, there are three trees and also a few meters from the trees are containers. Uh, now, the three trees, they identified as many as 11 uh, gunshot marks on the trees. 
and uh, beyond that to the containers, some more were identified. Uh, the ballistic experts with the police CID, uh, Michael Kujo, uh, told the commission that uh, it appears the marks were caused by high-velocity weapons. The trajectory, does it look like this could have been warning shot? For the angle, I don't know, for warning shot, but uh, mostly once it's targeted at this one, for warning shot, I think mostly it should be up. So once it's targeted at an object below the height of maybe a normal human being, then I don't see it as a warning shot. And therefore you conclude that they, are poten they were potentially aimed? They were Even not... Even aimed at a tree, but aimed? I may say so. You say so. What would be the basis for that? I don't know. Would I, so the gun was coming from this direction. The shots were coming from the left to my right. Mm -hmm. So... As it was going, it could hit any other thing or any object. Can you tell the caliper of weapon potentially? Pistol, uh, AK-47. I mean, can you just tell from the wound whether it's... This wound, we measure about this one. This one is uh, more like a tear or a cut. And we cannot tell you exactly the caliber of bullet that created this mark. But it's what I can say in general is uh, it's created by high-velocity bullet. So that's the, the ballistic expert there. But Joseph, what really was the main objective of this visit to the area? To question witnesses or just to gather evidence? In the words of the executive secretary, he says uh, they are to identify things that a thousand words cannot explain. Mm. Uh, so they want to, they've heard the testimony, they want to uh, go to the venue and have a look at the place for themselves to have a better understanding so that subsequently the people they engage, uh, they could be able to connect and relate to the testimony that they are hearing. So what's next after this? Uh, a number of witnesses are expected to appear before the commission. Uh, uh, the Inspector General of Police, we are told, uh, should be appearing within next week. Uh, you recall that Lydia Seria Malhasa, the MP, uh, was supposed to appear, but the commission tells us that uh, they are no longer interested in engaging her because they've concluded that she was not a primary witness to the incident that they are investigating. So they are narrowing it down. They are paying attention to that. Okay. Thank you very much, Joseph Akable. He was at the Ayawasu West Wogon area uh, when the commission paid a visit to the area. Now, you're still listening to the Midday News on Joy 99.7 FM. Now, an 18 year old female recipient of the 2018 President's Independence Day Awards is allegedly yet to receive her prize a year after she was awarded. Hassana Yakubu was one of the recipients last year after she excelled in the BCE. Uh, her guardians say although they have made several appeals to the education authorities, the young girl is yet to receive her prize. Al Hassan Wema is with Corruption Control Network and speaks for the family. It was uh, one girl, uh, Yakubu Hassana, who they wanted to change it to uh, another girl in Tamale, which was not the right thing. I pushed this issue and I had a call from the Director General of Ghana Education Service last year, uh, prior to the 5th March, that uh, because the thing was almost a day, the girl cannot receive it. Uh, last year, but this year, uh, 2019, the girl will receive it with uh, 2019 group. Uh, as we speak now, we don't know what is happening. So, Mr. Mr. Wema, Mr. Wema, what what you are saying is that initially there was an attempt to subterfuge the process. Yes. Yeah, yeah. To give Hassan's package to someone else. Yes. Yeah. To give us an ad, uh, a package to someone from Tamale, who is even from Tamale's uh, uh, private school, and and the idea, the I, the the the, the reason is that the private schools are not supposed to take a uh, presidential award apart from the public school. So the the director general of the Ghana Education Service, you said, convinced you to withdraw the case or the petition you had sent before yes. Shraj. Yes, he called me in the night. I still have his number, and I, I, I told him that, prior to that, I even called him five times, and he didn't pick. You have Al Hassan Wema. He speaks for the family. Meanwhile, President Okofado has been handing out awards to this year's recipients as a ceremony in Accra. From where Elton Brobe joins us on the line. Elton, so how many children are being awarded this year? So you know we have 24 drawn from the previous 10 regions of the country, and they are all in the. They are all first year in the real secondary schools. They have held in the last BEC exam, and that's the motivation behind the our 24 of them across the country. We are also happy that you have expanded the school feeding program to many schools in the country. This will encourage more children to enroll in schools. Your Excellency, it is our fervent hope and prayer 
that education will continue to be the highest priority of your government, as the theme for this year's celebration can only be achieved through education. Planting for food and jobs has yielded fruit by creating jobs and reducing poverty among the people of Ghana. The introduction of NAPO has given jobs to the youth as a partial solution to graduate unemployment in the country. This will enable them to contribute their quota to the development of the nation. In addition, the creation of six new regions would also enhance development in our country. Your Excellency, the theme for this year's celebration reads Celebrating Peace and Unity. We, the children of Ghana, humbly request that security is strengthened in our country to prevent criminal acts which result in creating fear and panic among we, the children. Now, Elton, what has been the president's response to the request by these children? Well, first, according to him, the new curriculum to form the basis for teaching from kindergarten to classes will begin uh, in September this year. Also, government is in the process of upgrading uh, all teacher training colleges, university status, with the teacher at the center of this reforms in the education sector for peace uh, and the strength of peace in the country. You want uh, Ghana to be united behind our upcoming independence to champion a new cause. My colleague there, Elton Brube. You're still listening to the Midday News. Uh, we'll take a quick break at this point, but as she exits the tourism sector, which she, sh she supervised over the last two years, we look back at the tenure of one of the ministers who has been loved and disliked in equal measure. Uh, what we have done in the short 24 months is bearing fruit. You saw the influx of the nature of what we are aggressively doing, promoting Ghana, getting to the global. It, it tells you that something is going well. Thanks for staying with us on the Midday News. Let's do some sports now. Ridwan Ibrahim Asante has the latest. Yes, busy Sunday for Kumasi Asante Kotoko, who are in need of a win to revive their qualification bid in Group C of the CAF Confederation Cup. The Porcupine Warriors were beaten 3-1 last week in Ketwe, Zambia to Inkana FC and have vowed to avenge that defeat this Sunday at the Babayara Stadium. Kotoko Kosiki Akono admits they must improve. I think if I ask you about the game, you, know, you have one thing to say, and that is the way our area balls, we feel there, okay? So we have to stop this problem, it's a fact. We have to stop it. We discuss what we have to do on the field of play on Sunday in Kana. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it didn't go well at all. Uh, not just, you know, we only look at the defenders, but the team itself, you no, know, we were not compact. But, you know, I've taken that in good faith. Um, and they are aware. We are all aware what we have to do. It's important that a uh, response will be very, very, very positive. You can see there. That's your sports for afternoon. Anyway. Thank you very much, Ridwan. Now, Gondugu Islamic Primary School in the Yendi municipality is calling for an extension of government school feeding program to attract and retain children in the school. The social intervention program was introduced in 2005 on the back of proof that availability of free meals increased enrollment and kept children in school. In Gondugu uh, village, where there's only one basic school, teachers say getting food has been an excuse for the children to go home and never return. As a municipality readies for developmental takeoff, the teachers contend introduction of the school feeding program will reverse the trend. Uh, we'll get to hear Joy News' Gifty and Pia's reports in our subsequent bulletins. But from being a judge, the most active tourism minister in West Africa at the African Travel Times 2018 Awards to now a minister of state at the office of the president. Assigned to the office of the senior minister Catherine Nafiku's tenure as tourism minister will be remembered as a mixed bag, hated and loved in equal measure. Catherine Afiku had a Herculean task of turning around the fortunes of a sector with enormous potential, but which has received little attention from successive governments. There's more in this News Desk report. Her journey to becoming the sector minister did not start on a smooth note. President Ekufuado ordered an investigation into reports that the nominee for the tourism minister and her husband were defendant in a case of breach of contract in 2007. She was eventually cleared. After her appointment in February 2017, she faced the gigantic task of fulfilling the new patriotic party's 14 key promises to the tourism and arts sector. Crucial among them was the promise to build a large theater for each region, with the exception of Accra. 
Tact a sweet talker, she seemed much more focused on tourism than the creative arts. Evidence of that being the appointment of over 30 personalities as ambassadors to spearhead the See Ghana, Eat Ghana, Wear Ghana, Few Ghana campaign. I was particularly excited because when we started the slogan of See Ghana, Eat Ghana, Wear Ghana and Few Ghana, uh, not very many people noticed that at the very top it resonated. Uh, if you watch, the president has always mostly worn the Ghanaian attire, sending a strong signal to the textile industry. You also notice The initiative has not really yielded any measurable result. Personalities like SP Kofi Sapon, D Black, Nana Kwame Ampedu, Daddy Lumba, Fancy Gadam, Ajako, Lucky Mensa, Reggie and Boli, and Senator Dagadu have done very little since the appointment. During her vetting, Madame Efeku made known her plans to create some 500,000 tourism-related jobs. But it's a long-term strategy. You need a 10-year plan to reposition a West African nation as a gateway for tourism. And also the outbound tourism where we have massively, in the last 90 days, you saw the influx of the nature of what we are aggressively doing, promoting Ghana, getting to the global media stage. Entertainment critics such as Ola Michael and Arnold Asamuabedu publicly criticized her for what they say was her poor handling of the matters in the sector. After Joy News' Jojo Cobbiner's explosive feature on the deplorable sanitation conditions at the Cape Coast Castle, Mrs. Afeku launched an interministerial task force to fight open defecation around the Cape Coast and Elmina castles. But her biggest criticisms will come from Ghana's decision to spend a total of $4.5 million on the organization of three editions, 2008, 2019 and 2020, of the All Africa Music Awards, AFRIMA. The biggest achievement, even though she was once again criticized for this, was the Four Circle Festival, which saw over 40 American celebrities storm Ghana in December last year. Uh, I mean, 600,000 extra people visited Ghana in 2018 and 2017. If they spent $10, but on average, every single tourist to Ghana spends $2,600 in a four or five day stay times 600,000. That's why we are the fourth foreign exchange earner for the economy. Uh, the event saw big names like Boris Kujo, who was appointed ambassador of film for Ghana, Nicole Ari Parker, Rosario Dawson, Anthony Anderson, sell Ghana to the world. Catherine Afeku will be replaced by Deputy Lands and Natural Resources Minister Barbara Otinjesi. Industry persons are waiting to see what Barbara Otinjesi has to offer the sector. That's the love and hate story of the outgoing tourism and creative arts minister. Oh, of course, I feel the church in here. Worship leader Joe Metal there, leading audience of the AM show on the Joy News channel in a great worship experience earlier this morning. This month, we here at Joy News and Joy FM will be treating you to great Ghanaian music as we kickstart our Ghana month. Expect to hear music from the old school days and from the current generation. We decided to kickstart it all with a worship session led by Joe Metal. Here's more of what happened. <laughs> Stay with us here or join us for more of this authentic Ghanaian music as this, uh, we celebrate Ghana Month. But quickly, before we take social media, let's head to Parliament because we are told uh, that the Trades Minister, Alan Shemantin, says government will use legal options to forcefully take over the Ayensu Starch Factory from just one group of companies after its subsidiary uh, failed to invest in the company more than two years after takeover. Joseph Opokugapo will give us more details in our subsequent bulletins. What's trending on social media maps? Well, 
Ghana people, month. Mm. It's Ghana month, but people are talking about hashtag this band party militia now. And at mm. Gomda Sang says, nobody or law can stop vigilantism in this country. The president and the politicians are just playing lip service. And at Frederick Nikomi says, NPP should first disarm the invisible and others in the regular security services. After that, you can start the outside run. And Noah Quetta says, NDC and NPP will not help, but we, the citizens, and our laws guiding the political parties must work. Hashtag disband party militias now. And the campaign is on. The National Peace Council has welcomed opposition NDC's proposal to mediate talks to disband party militias after commi committing uh, to meet with the NPP. We heard from the presidency and the chairman of the Peace Council. Of course, we're expecting the president's response in a few hours. And that's it for the midday news here on Joy 99.7 FM. There's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. I am MFA Apau. Thanks for your company.